Hey guys, so what's been happening in the hobby this week? Well, I thought we'd have a bit of a chat about Old World. It's now released and um, I'm pretty excited. So we're gonna have a little chat on Old World and you know, getting into it. Um, just have a little bit of a chat about, you know, uh, some of the strategy, strategies that you can go through in terms of getting into this this game as it is a much more dense and, and, and packed game than, than some others that you could get into. And uh, all those sorts of things that come, come along with uh, doing a rank and flank game. And uh, you know, for those of us that are in the hobby that, uh, you know, maybe uh, adding this to the collection of games we do, you know, some of those strategies of how to make it easier and so on. And, you know, really focusing on theme. I'm not really too worried uh, in this video talking about sort of, I guess, too much of the costs and so on. Although we will go into that a little bit because we touch on it with theme. But uh, yeah, just looking at how you can inspire yourself to uh, find uh, new and interesting ways to uh, express your creativity within the hobby in, in, a, in a fantasy style rank and flank army, uh, like what's offered in Old World. So we're gonna have a bit of a talk about that. Uh, you know, in particular, we're gonna be looking at, uh, you know, Warriors of Chaos, uh, as I'm doing some uh, balls of a shoot, which are gonna be, uh, which is to do with the theme we're gonna talk about, which is, uh, you know, Chaos Dwarves are back. So I want to do some Chaos Warriors and Chaos Dwarves and do a kind of theme around her shirt. So I've uh, started the, the, the collection with this little guy here. So we've done a nice, simple little conversion with one of the, the Warcry Warbrands um, uh, bull helmets here uh, onto a Chaos Warrior from AOS. And, uh, you know, there's some others that I've done, but you'll see those on the channel as we go along, as you're going to be seeing more Old World videos uh, as the time progresses. But I've got a really nice uh, color scheme for this one. So while we chat about that, I'm going to go through the color scheme here. I've got a nice new little blend for, for you guys to take a look at. We're going to be doing uh, sort of a blue-purple into a blue, so purple at the top and then going down into a, into a bright blue at the ends. Sort of like a reverse of some of the other ones I've done with purple uh, and using blue as the highlight color. And I'm going to use that across uh, all of the capes and so on. And then obviously in the armor, this will be the first sort of lore-friendly one for Chaos, I guess. Maybe I've done some others. Um, we're going to be doing metal armor, dark metal uh, with some brass trim and that sort of thing. So it will be close to the, the lore-friendly color scheme, but with a little pop color of this blend on the cape and a few other little uh, little details. But um, yeah, I'm really excited to start. This is my first old world model or fantasy model back, back in, uh, you know, and now that it's released. And um, that's really cool. Back in the old days, I mean, I've done many, many fantasy armies, but this is the first one in, in the modern era using a modern Chaos Warrior that's not uh, all, all uh, compact and, and, and rectangular to fit on a square base. This one's nice and uh, dynamic. So that'll be really fun. So uh, I won't waffle on here in the intro too long. We'll, we'll get into it. Um, this should be it should be a good one. So let's get started, eh? Well, how awesome is it that uh, fantasy's back? You know, I mean, uh, for those those of us that have been around long enough uh, to have been around when fantasy was 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 live and well, uh, you know, and unfortunately the the ending of it and and the sort of uh, canning of the of the IP, as it were, at least in terms of Warhammer Fantasy the game. Uh, obviously, it 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 lived and breathed uh, continuously through Blood Bowl and other other systems, but uh, for fantasy, it, it did it, they did they did can it, uh, but now it is back and. And uh, what a great time to be in the hobby. Uh, you know, like the, uh, I've said this before when I got back into the hobby, you know, I just saw this explosion of of stuff, you know, great kits, you know, all this terrain, all this like really cool multi-part kits and just a, a real explosion, not just within GW stuff, but um, other companies as well. And just, just now with 3D printing, it's just, you know, it's like a gold, an, another golden era of, of the miniature hobby. And, and what a wonderful time it is to be, to be around in it uh, as now we've also got to enjoy uh, fantasy again, which is which is awesome because I mean that's really the root uh, sort of uh, I guess birthplace of everything GW. You know, you wouldn't 40k wouldn't be what it is without Warhammer Fantasy. Uh, most of their IPs and their games wouldn't really be as cool as they are without things like the Chaos Gods and the Orcs and all the various types of uh, fantasy elements that you know cross blended in into the sci-fi universes and and uh, that's sort of thing, you know, it came from that original sort of uh, birthplace of D&D &D and historicals, you know, and, and, and built on top of that as Games Workshop, you know, grew and, and, it, and it morphed into Fantasy Battles and, and, and Rogue Trader and then 40k. Uh, and, and they share a lot of similarities. So, you know, yeah, you really can't have one without the other. And it's, it's great to see that they've finally, uh, you know, found a way to support this uh, you know, um, back in the stores and, and back for everyone to enjoy because, you know, canning it was obviously a mistake. I mean, no one can argue otherwise. That was a really bad decision. It might have been failing for whatever reason. I'm not going to go into all that here. There's a million videos on YouTube and everywhere that talk about it. But, you know, 
uh, what they're doing now for Old World is the correct approach. You know, that's what they should have done then, but they're now they're doing it now. Okay, so at least at least that's happening, which is wonderful. We get a full rule book with full rules, full army books, everything on release, which is wonderful to see. You can get into it and you can play it. And they've released all of the the sort of the the wild factions or the legacy factions that they're not supporting uh, at least now anyway um, as PDFs that you can also play, which are full rules, full army lists, everything. So you basically have every every fantasy faction that you did uh, uh, back then uh, in one way or another. Whether it's uh, officially supported or not doesn't matter. You've got the full host to, to look at, as I've just alluded to in the intro. I'll also be doing Chaos Dwarves and you know and, and Vampire Counts and other armies as well because I just love that and uh, you know that. This they they're giving the, the the full breadth for you to um, you know dig into. This is coming from from uh, from SDS Games or Specialist Design Studio or Forge World as it's known uh, publicly. Uh, you know, and they're a different type of studio to main studio. This isn't coming out of the main GW studio. So we see, you know, uh, a different kind of approach. So yeah, so back to the original uh, idea of coming into this and seeing all this explosion of uh, of miniatures and, and, and products that you can get into. Yeah, isn't it wonderful that it's back? And uh, yeah, you have everything at your disposal to, to enjoy, not just, you know, from the old models that they're bringing back, which yes, there are, you know, level levels of, of finish on those models. You know, some, some have shown their age and others haven't but it is you know fantasy is a is a a bit of a fun you know sort of derpy ride of fantasy you know it's got it's got those elements in it you know like the snotling pump wagon and all that stuff the humor and the 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 the, the tongue-in-cheek that that goes along with fantasy you see it in blood bowl it, it, it's an important factor so you know I, I wouldn't i wouldn't roll your eyes at those old models Yes, they're, they're making money on it, etc., all that sort of thing. But ultimately what it means is, and what they've said in their articles, is that you're free to convert, make models that we're not releasing, etc. You know, do, um, you know, um, you know uh, unit fillers, which if you don't know what that is, creating a large, you know, square base piece in the center of a unit that has a sort of diorama on it or something that you want to put on it so you don't have to paint all the models in a unit. So you might have a unit of 20, let's say. You only have to paint, like, let's say, 10 or 12, and the, the middle rectangular section can be a you know a sort of a, a terrain feature or whatever you like a little diorama of a few minis doing something and that lessens the number of models you have to paint so that they've legitimized all those kind of aspects that we were already doing back in the day with fantasy but they've legitimized it so they want this to be very much you know that type of thing at least initially that's what they've kind of told us and that's great that's very old school games workshop you know that's a very old school kind of mentality and that's wonderful to see that 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 type of uh, flavor of gw still exists somewhere in the company and that's wonderful so what does that mean well that means we're open to start theming and making these armies however we want playing any of the factions we want and have a really great time with fantasy and so that's where we're going to begin on that positive note looking at what what can we do to get into this how can we theme our armies how can we get the most out of it you know and for us that are old how do we reconnect with that wonderful time and how, how do we reinvigorate it into the modern era and give ourselves something new and fresh uh, to do with the hobby so what do you start with? Well, for me, I, I was thinking about something elite. Obviously, there's many ways to, to tackle this, uh, but, you know, it's all dependent on your time, uh, money, etc. in terms of which way you're going to go. But for me, I was looking at, okay, I want to do, you know, this. I've got AOS, you know, I do 40K stuff. I do uh, many, many things. Infinity, um, you know, uh, Shatterpoint, MCP. I mean, the list goes on. I'm, I'm, I'm one of those, <laughs> what would you call, like a Renaissance hobbyist, I guess. You know, you do everything. Uh, and And or you call him a madman, I guess, or, or someone who's a bit bit crazy. Uh, but, you know, uh, for those of us out there that like to dabble in all things, um, you know, how do I fit it into the schedule? How do I get the that part of it in so I can enjoy it? Well, I was looking at, obviously, elite armies, so something that's less models, uh, you know, to get started, and, and looking at a 1,000 points, really, uh, to begin. Because, you know, who are you going to be playing against? That's the other question. And for me, it's the guys at the club. You know, we've already had some guys starting to play. They've already started building some of the armies. We're all from the old school, you know, back in the day. So uh, many of us are old school fantasy players. And, uh, you know, it, it didn't take much to push us over the line. You know, uh, many of us ha still have all those armies in our collection. So, um, you know, that's what I was looking at. You know, a nice small thousand points that I can start to build on, you know, and then and then really decide how I want to go. And so for me, I thought, OK, Warriors of Chaos. But then I saw the Chaos Dwarves and I've got a real deep love of Chaos Dwarves. I always wanted an army of them. I never had one and um you know i love all the derpy derpy like you know hats and everything else
else like that. And I like that the newer school ones that are more serious Chaos Warriors. I like all the different designs of Chaos Dwarves. I think they're a wonderful faction. I think they're awesome. That's it's so they're so much fun, and uh, they 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 comprise some of the best elements, like from a tactical point of view, uh, of Chaos. Right? You have magic. You have artillery and 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 missile fire units. You have uh, screens and and um, you know. Uh, light infantry and and cavalry and so on in, in the hobgoblins and all of that like they have the full plethora of options that you want for an army so they're a really a really great one from that point of view as well but i didn't want to just do that i wanted to do the warriors of chaos as well i wanted to you know find that theme that i could blend those two ideas together and, and build a collection that allows me to play both army lists right because i'm just playing against the guys at the club initially i'm not planning to go to tournaments or anything like that or at least in the early days anyway this is more for you know this is like my side project for a bit of fun to to enjoy something that i that i that i loved you know and and that i that i can love again you know reconnect with that with that fantasy joy and um you know because i've really missed rank and flank uh style movement and positioning and so on aos is a wonderful game but there is something uh beautiful about about fantasy that you know when you're in it it it, it, it is it is a, a really great uh, tactical uh, play and the, the new rules are, are great you know the book is very comprehensive there's a lot of uh, new elements to the game it's not just a rehash of the old the old systems there's a lot of blending of systems a lot of taking from other inspirational sources to improve on the rules uh, it has a lot going on in there uh, specifically to do with things like yeah uh, movement and reforming units um, the way uh, combat is done uh, all these different elements which are altering how the units perform on the table you uh, you know, things like, you know, you don't just run run units down necessarily when you win combats. You know, there, there's a sort of um, almost like a tug of war going on as, as the units move back and forth rather than just getting wiped out uh, and, and that sort of thing. Or fail charges, you'll still have to run a certain amount forward. So that might put you out of position. So there's all these little, little uh, tactical uh, maneuvers going on, units that have abilities that allow them to like triple move or reform with it without any cost. Uh, all of these sorts of things that are really important impactful on the game uh, magic has been overhauled i mean what a great system it is like it's so good you know these sort of abilities that are now in inside of the different phases of the game so the magic has more impact in that phase and is more focused towards doing something in that phase rather than just an entirely separate little mini game at the beginning of the game or whatever where you're just kind of doing these back and forth spells or trying to dispel etc but these are now embedded within the game as it's going on and I think that that's much better for magic generally uh, it, it makes it easier uh, in terms of balancing and points costs as well because you can you can you can really hone in on what it's really impacting on on the game and I think that's really great so you know for the future of the game I, I really like the the way this is going and it's 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 really awesome but it is a very very big and and and, and dense game so there is that so anyway we won't go on to that just yet we're, we're, get, we're gonna start with just themes so I'll, I'll, I'll step myself back a bit and not waffle on about that but but, you know, all, all I'm saying is it's 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 uh it's wonderful and, and there's a lot there for you to, to draw on for inspiration. So, you know, we're looking at Chaos Warriors, so what do we do? Well, you know, then I'm thinking, okay, so how do I how do I blend those two concepts together, the, the Chaos Dwarves uh, and the Chaos Warriors? Well, we have the bull theme, right? So luckily Warcry is, Warcry is a game and there's a there's a shoot based uh, warband in there and they have bull helmets. So I'm like, sweet, we'll start with that. I'm a great proponent of when you're beginning with conversions and trying to theme something, you want to start off simple. I, uh, some of my most favorite conversions are the simplest ones, the ones where it's just a head swap or a simple, you know, cut and very simple, um, you know, uh, repositioning or rejigging of parts that can be glued together and you get a nice seamless uh, fit, you know, that sort of thing is really really great because uh you know it minimizes any putty work you have to do or any re-sculpting you have to do and, and, and they're awesome so they're often the ones i try to go to because uh, i like that especially for gaming armies that's like the perfect type of conversion right where you can just mix a few parts around and get a new look without too much effort and that's where i've begun that's what you'll see on the channel these kind of like minimal levels of conversion but gives you a totally different look and silhouette uh, as you go along and you can get you can build yourself up to those more elaborate projects later in later in, in in the process so i was looking at that so we get some simple little you know nods to the bulls and that sort of theme uh, and then we're looking at color schemes so what sort of color scheme can i do that's going to cross both these armies well you know you could do the red 
it because obviously the red red Chaos Warriors are very classic and you've got red as the main classic color for Chaos Dwarves, but I wanted to try something else. And so there's another element that you can go to to start thinking about how you could, uh, you know, refresh your experience with fantasy and what you do for the army itself. So color scheme becomes the next sort of big, big thing. So you've got a few little ideas about, about conversion and how you're going to do it. Uh, obviously, I'm going to use AOS models and convert them across, uh, as well as maybe the odd classic model, that sort of thing. Uh, and then and then we're going to build up those Chaos Warriors in that way. And with obviously with Chaos Dwarves, uh, most of that initially anyway is going to be uh, 3D prints um, that are available through third parties, that sort of thing. Or they call them Infernal Dwarves uh, from most companies, you know, have their own, their own generic name for them and they, they do them that way way. So to get access to Chaos Dwarves, that's probably the, the initial start is looking at third party uh, producers of, of, you know, infernal dwarves, which are not Chaos Dwarves for just for legal reasons. We're not, I'm not suggesting that you uh, pirate or do any, any, any underhanded things to get your Chaos Dwarves. But, you know, there are, you know, the theme of sort of evil dwarves is a theme and there are many other third party companies that produce evil dwarves, which can stand in for Chaos, Chaos Dwarves, etc. Uh, that sort of thing. So, you know, uh, but yeah, what's a color that can come across to that? So I was lo looking at it and there are uh, other Chaos Dwarf factions that do use things like purples and blues. And I thought that a, you know, a, a sort of a blue purple would be a great one. I do a lot of blends on the channel. It would, it would make sense to, to muck around with that as well. And I enjoy doing it, especially on capes. And um, so I thought, okay, well, we'll do that. And we might use things like yellow as pop colors, you know, golds and brasses, that sort of thing. It, it, should, it should fit in really well. And it's a color that can cross both armies. So then you're starting to think about like, you know, a little bit in terms of this cost factor, right? So to make this collection, uh, you know, cost effective is more, I guess, the, the word that I would use or the phrase that I would put, you know, so I can, I can utilize both uh, collections together, you know, some games, you know, I might use the Cha Chaos Dwarf Sorcerer as my, you know, Chaos Warrior Sorcerer, you know, and that sort of thing. I was thinking of using like Chosen Knights, uh, using the, the the Bull Centaurs as as the Chosen Knights rather than Chosen Knights, that sort of thing. So I'm utilizing both collections at the same time. You know, maybe my Chosen Chaos Warriors are actually a unit of Chaos Dwarves, and I use those. So the idea is that the Chaos Warriors are living quite close to the, the region where the Chaos Dwarves live, and um, yeah, you've got all those different other factions. And so there are some there. I've got to go into more research. We'll do a bit more. Obviously, all, all of my little fantasy characters are going to have names. You've got to have names with your, with your fantasy army. So I get, get, get right into the lore of it and, and, and figure out where the, you know, which, which castle or faction actually does use blues and purples and that sort of thing. And I might try to tie it into that and come up with, with a, nice, a, a nice name for it all and that sort of thing. But, you know, that's part of the fun of digging into this, right? That's part of the fun of the fantasy lore and where it comes from. It's, it's very rich and there's a lot that you can dig into to help give you inspiration and find that color scheme that you want to do, all those conversions that you want to do. So yeah, in terms of bull themes, there's many other other options there. I mean, you have the Warcry uh, Warbands guy, the, the Centaur guy, which is going to be perfect for a Demon Prince. Uh, and I've even toyed around, depending on whether I can get him on a base that's the right size for fantasy or near enough. Uh, but, you know, Kragnos would make a really great, greater Demon of Ashut. You know, if you if you wanted to convert him up, which I do, uh, somehow get him onto a smaller square base, uh, he would make a really amazing sort of greater Demon for Ashut. You know, like, you know, deck him out with some of the Chaos Dwarf, maybe give him a beard, you know, a helmeted head or something like that, or a big hat, you know, like just change him up a little bit and turn him into something really great uh, for the army. And that would that would stand in as your Chaos Lord on, on Chaos Dragon or, um, you know, or your Sorcerer on Chaos Dragon, that sort of thing. So I've thought of other ways to to really push the, the bull theme uh, in the army and give it even more of that flavor. So the Chaos Warriors are really connected to Hushut and to, uh, and to the Chaos Dwarves. But yeah, that's, that's for down the track. We'll see. That probably won't be till next year but you know there's all these ideas whirring away in my head about oh how could I go with this how could I go with that and that's what will happen when you get into this you know your mind will start to you know draw out all these different ideas you know and, and that's that's the best way to begin you know you sort of you think a little bit about cost and efficiency there or, or cost effective and then you put that aside for a minute and, and, and allow your mind to wander and really imagine what could be. Of course, you're not going to do all these ideas. Of course, you know, you're not going to have the funds to do them or whatever. You might do. You might have the funds to do it. But, you know, your time is precious. But it's about enjoying the fantasia of, of, of that. You know, just like list writing when you're gaming, you know, the, the list that you create, it, just, it, it gets into your mind and you get to really play out this, 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 uh, this dream in your head about what these little characters are doing. And that's really part of the joy of miniature hobby generally. 
uh, as I'm sure all, all of us, uh, you know, indulge in, in this aspect of the hobby. It's a, it, it's a great thing. So then finally you're looking at, okay, which models am I going to start with? Where am I going to begin? Well, with fantasy, it's, you know, th there's many ways you could do that, but you're going to need a lord of some sort. You're going to need a battle standard bearer, and you're going to need a sorcerer or a wizard of some sort, right? No matter which army you're choosing, uh, those things are pretty much going to be in the army almost every time, or at least one or two of those options will be. Uh, you know, definitely some kind of uh, magic user, because that's just part of what fantasy is, or old world is. And um, so I'm going to be using the word fantasy to describe it a lot because that's how I know it uh, so it's going to be called that for quite a bit I'll try to use the word old world and that sort of thing as much as possible but to me the game is called fantasy and that's that's what it is and for anyone who's uh, who's as ancient as I am will we'll also be calling it fantasy I'm sure uh, so you know but um, yeah you, you're going to be looking at like where do you begin and 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 some of those characters are a great way to start so deciding what your little lord's going to be you know or your war boss or whichever whichever faction you're choosing what it's going to be you know thinking about your, your battle standard bearer you know, and obviously GW is going to release a lot of the old models and, and and new ones as well as these factions release. So you might want to hold off for that, pre-order those things, uh, or you might want to just go uh, completely, uh, you know, off road and 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 figure out your own your own uh, way to 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 get into this. And as I said before, there are many many options for that. You have AOS models, you have even some 40k models you could use. Um, you've got third-party vendors that do 3D prints of you know generic themes, which are very very similar to. Uh, GW factions that you can use. You have other game systems entirely that also do uh, their own factions, which could be used. So there, there's many, many options out there for you uh, to really begin. Uh, but I, I would suggest, yeah, those characters are probably a, a good start. And um, and then looking at like either an army box, a simple army box that gives you a, a small, small collection, but really deciding on, are you going to be converting things like AOS models across, or are you going to use straight up fantasy models or third party? If you're using third party or AOS models, you're going to need square bases and move and that sort of thing. Well, you're going to need movement trays anyway, but uh, you're going to need square bases and they've all been upgraded or at least the smaller ones have onto this uh, 30 by 30 uh, and 25 by 25 is the smallest now. So you've got those two square base sizes for most of your infantry and then you've got some slightly wider one for the for the cavalry and, and the smaller one. So you've got a few different sizes there that you have to sort out and um, and, and you have a look through your army list. Thankfully, the whole, the whole, uh, the whole game is released so you can find your army list inside of the army books that they're a part of so you've got the the hordes one for the for the evil factions and the the fantasy one for all the good factions and um once you've got that and you've had a look you'll know instantly what the base size are because it's listed there in, in the in the data entry for the unit so that's really great so you figure out what you're going to need you know and if you need if you need square bases do you go through gw or do you go through third parties that do 3d printing and and print out a bunch of bases for you and that sort of thing but it's all relatively accessible it's not too hard to find these things on line and, and you can work that out and then you can start costing and figuring out where you're going to start but as I said something around 500 to a thousand points to begin your your journey I think is the best way to, to, to start it and wait and see what GW releases for your faction because then then you might you might get inspired you might like some of that stuff you might not but at least then you you're not sort of overspending too much or getting too far deep before you've actually started painting and playing it because the playing side is going to be really full-on you know it's it's going to take a long time some of the mates at the club have already started but it's taking a long time for them to get through you know their first games and I'm sure once I do my game it's going to be uh, very long as well I'm sure it's going to take some time you know and uh, it'll speed up as you get more into it but you know it is something to consider and I, and I think that starting small and thinking about theme and getting excited for that theme and and really digging into that side of it and how you're going to you know uh, paint these and how you're going to convert them and what you're going to do um, that's really where the fun is in the early stages and then you can speed up and get more outlandish and, and bigger armies as you go. But this one definitely needs some sort of, I, 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 th I think, a, a personal personal strictness when it comes to how much you buy because you could get snowed under really easy with this game because it is expensive a, a, as opposed to the other games. So that's, that, that's just where I'll leave that part of it. But we will probably talk about this again in terms of cost in another video uh, on, on, on how much fantasy actually costs to get, get, a, get a, a real army going uh, for more competitive play, let's say. Uh, but for, for the initial stage when you're playing with your mates and at a club or social games, that sort of thing, yeah, you want, you want a nice fluffy start, you know? Just, just 
you know, glide your way in on that cloud and, and enjoy what fantasy is and have a lot of fun with that. And I think you'll you'll have a, a great experience as, as I am now, as you're watching me paint this Chaos Warrior. I'm sure I've had fun. I can't wait to get onto the Battle Standard Bearer and the Sorcerer, which you'll most likely see on the channel. Uh, and, and that's going to be really cool. I can't wait to get them together, get them in a unit, uh, you know, and play my first game. I mean, it's going to be a mind-blowing experience. I haven't played fantasy in, God, uh, over 15 years. So to, to, to get on that table... And, uh, and 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 put those models down and have another go at it that we, with a whole new rule set. I mean, that's you know my, my hands are tingling just at the thought of uh, of playing that game. It's going to be awesome. So yeah, I'll, I'll leave you on that note, on that on that positive note. I really don't have anything negative to say. As I said, apart from those cautionary um, uh, you know ideas on cost and and how much you're spending, which I do think you do have to be very uh, wary of that and and be and be uh, you know arm yourself against FOMO and that sort of thing and let these things wash over you and then see if the urge to do it is still there. Uh, yeah, you you really don't want to get too caught up in all the hype. You know, you want to take you take your, your steps slow and, and enjoy the hobby for what it is. You don't need to have, you know, another thousand models that you never paint in your collection. Better to have a small collection that you did paint and enjoy and play some games with and have, you know, actual social interactions with your friends and people that you know and, and tournaments or clubs or wherever you go. Uh, have some of those interactions and real human, you know, uh, connections. You know, that's the whole point of this hobby. That's what makes it fun is hanging out with other people and talking about it and just like I'm doing here on this video and you're listening to me you know vibe and chat on it and you're having your own ideas unfortunately we can't do a back and forth in this in this format but you know there's obviously other formats but it's still the same sort of thing right you're you're, you're vibing on those ideas and enjoying that 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 experience with the hobby and, and that's part of the fun of it right so yeah take your time have fun and uh, you know you should get a lot out of fantasy because it's it's a great a great world a great lore a great IP and I'm, I'm really really happy it's back so uh, let's see how I've gone on this Chaos Warrior I'm sure I've, I've gone okay because it, it it's it's a color scheme I've wanted to try for a while it's been in my head for a bit so let's see how I've gone and I'll give you my, my closing thoughts well one Chaos Warrior all done for uh for her shoot what a what a what a time to be alive it's like 15 20 years later and I'm painting a fantasy miniature I can't believe it uh it's 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 a new day that's for sure um yeah so like I hope you've enjoyed this little chat on on the old world or fantasy as I like to call it uh, and um you know just giving you some ideas about how to begin or maybe how to think about it uh to get you started um you know I'm I'm going to have a lot of fun uh, getting into this and uh you know sharing this this little journey with you uh as we go but let's take a look at how I've gone here on this little chaos warrior so yeah like it's a fun a fun color scheme you know it's very much in the vein of zinch or slanesh and coincidentally they're the marks i'll probably be using so that works really well we've got the teals you know with the red the the purples and the blue uh everything's contrasting against one another we've even got the the red the blue and the purple glazes into the armor there's a lot of harmony going on here a lot of uh contrasting colors and and, and sympathetic colors uh going around uh this model uh to tie it all together and so i really love that and even a little bit of satin varnish there as i like to do you know to do sort of enameled uh surfaces that sort of thing for on the on the scabbard uh and on the weapon uh, just to give you a little subtle difference in shine qualities across the model that always helps uh, yeah, so it, it you know it, it comes out really cool, and it's a, definitely a way you could go. Obviously, I love these colors, so you know it's it's a thing. But uh, you know this blend is new. We haven't done a, a purple into blue like this before. We've done a, a blue to pink one with the purple, but not this way around. So that's pretty cool. It is a little bit tricky to, to start off with. So if you're new to this sort of thing, I would say probably don't try this one first. Maybe try one, the blue green blend or something like that. That's a little bit more straightforward. This one does require a little bit of back and forth uh, to get it to work, but it but it is really cool if you can do it. It's 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 wonderful. So yeah, well, I like it anyway. So yeah, I hope you do too. Um, I'll leave you a nice image of this one at the end of the paint list as I normally do. Uh, but yeah, we we're going to have a lot of fun uh, getting into this and uh, you know experimenting and, and and building a little collection here with some conversions and so on. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Please hit the like button, subscribe button. It really helps me out. And I guess I'll uh, catch you on the next one.